foundations of mathematics for elementary teachers. An in-service program designed to provide background for the improvement of instruction in mathematics in the elementary schools. Prepared by E. Glenadine Gibb and Augusta Schurer, members of the Department of Mathematics, State College of Iowa in Cedar Falls. Your instructor, Glenadine Gibb. Techniques of computation enable us to identify addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division assignments for pairs of numbers other than those associated with the basic facts. Suppose we consider the pair 24, 38, and their sum. We might think of this as we did for pairs of whole numbers less than 10, as we associate the first with a set of 24 objects, the second number with a set of 38 objects. The order, 24, 38. The set of 38 joins the set of 24. What number do we associate with this new set? We can name it 24 plus 38. Using features of our numeration system, grouping these single objects by in that 10, we can identify the standard name for this number. As we see that we have here 6, 10, and 2, 1. The numeral 62. Two names for the same number, we write 24 plus 38 is equal to 62. The thought of learning sums for all pairs of numbers is overwhelming. Fortunately, we have ways of making these assignments using certain of our techniques of computation, the topic of our discussion today. In considering ways of computing, we make use of certain basic understandings, understandings of the whole numbers, the system of numeration, the properties of addition and multiplication, the sums and products for pairs of numbers less than 10, and the subtraction and uh, division assignments that are associated with those sums and products. Just how do we make use of some of these basic understandings? Let's consider the pair 16-7. The 16, a number greater than 10, 7 less than 10. We know the basic fact, 6 plus 7 is equal to 13. Now for the sum of 16 and 7, we can express that as 16 plus 7. We can also think of that as 10 plus 6 plus 7. Using our associative property, you can think of this as 10 plus 6 plus 7. Making use of the basic fact, we then can think 10 plus 13 expressed as 10 plus 3. And using the associative property again, we can say this is equal to 20 plus 3, or the standard name 23. Now suppose that we consider a pair. This time, both are multiples of 10. The pair 60, 20. We can express their sum, 60 plus 20, or think of that as 6 times 10 plus 2 times 10. Using the commutative and distributive properties, we can think of this as 6 plus 2 times 10. And using our basic fact, 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. We can think 8 times 10 or 80. We can also think in terms of multiples of 100. 600, 200, there's some 800. 6,000, 2,000, the sum 8,000, 
each time making use of the basic fact, 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. Now, how can we make use of subtraction assignments to think about other assignments? Assignments for the pair 35, 6. We associate the first number with our starting set. And then we want to separate that set so that one of the subsets has six members. We separate the C here then that we need in order to have that subset of six. Think of this 110 as 10, 1. our set of six, the remainder set. What number can we associate with this set? We can name it 35 minus six. We can identify the standard name here, 29. Two names for the same number, we write 35 minus six is equal to 29. We see here that we've made use of the basic fact 15 minus 6 is equal to 9. Now consider a pair. Both members are multiples of 10. We now see that our starting set would be 6 tens. So we make a change here. the six tens. We want to separate this into two sets, a subset whose number is 20. The subset, the remainder set. What number do we associate with this? 60 minus 20 or 40. This time we make use of the basic fact. Six minus two is equal to four. We could also think of multiples of 100, 600, 200, the assignment 400, 6,000, 2,000, the assignment 4,000. But how can we make use of basic multiplication facts and properties of multiplication as we make assignment of products, pairs of numbers? This particular pair has a member less than 10, a multiple of 10. We can write their product by expressing it as 2 times 60, or we can think of this as 2 times 6 times 10. Using the associative property, you think of this as 2 times 6 times 10, making use of a basic multiplication fact, 2 times 6 is equal to 12, we write 12 times 10, or the standard name for this product, 120. Now let's consider a pair. The pair such that both are multiples of 10. We express the product as 20 times 60, or we can write this as 2 times 10 times 6 times 10. Now, making use of the commutative associative properties, we can think of this as 2 times 6 times 10 times 10. And again, grouping, we make use of a basic fact 2 times 6 is equal to 12, as we think 12 times 100 or the standard name expressed as 1,200. Let's consider now how we make use of basic division facts as we think of the quotient assigned to the pair 62. Our starting set, 6 tens. And let's use the two associating that with the number of equivalent sets that we want to separate this starting set into. This would be then one of our sets, the other one. What is the number each set? We can say that it's 6 divided by 2, 
or another way of thinking about it, 30. Here we make use of the basic fact, 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. Now suppose we consider the pair 60, 20. Our starting set, 6 tens again. And this time, let's associate the 20 with the number of members in each equivalent set that we want to separate this set into. There was one set of 20, another set of 20, and still another set of 20. We can name the number of sets here, the number of equivalent sets, as 60 divided by 20 or 3. Again, we make use of the basic fact. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. We've indicated here techniques for making assignments for certain kinds of pairs of numbers. Pairs, one of whose members is greater than 10, the other less than 10. And pairs such that both members were multiples, multiples of 10. Now, how do we make use of these techniques to make assignments for other pairs? Let's consider some examples. First, we think of the sum for 24 and 38, the pair that we considered earlier in our discussion. And we write 24 plus 38 to express that sum. Another way of seeing this is 20 plus 4, plus 30, plus 8. And then using the associative and commutative properties, we can think of this as 20 plus 30, plus 4, plus 8, grouping the tens and the ones. Two tens plus three tens, five tens, making use of a basic fact, four plus eight, we write 12. Again, we could think of this as 50 plus 10 plus two, using our associative property, five tens plus one ten, six tens, our standard name, 62, for the sum of the 24 and 38. The vertical form enables us to readily identify the ones, tens, one hundreds. As we look at that, a little bit too far. We see 20 plus 4, 30 plus 8. And we then see the sum of the tens, the ones. The sum, 62. Place value takes a roll here as we see the two in the tens place, the four in the ones. And again, the sum of the tens, the sum of the ones, the sum for 24 and 38. We could think of the sum of the ones first and then the tens and the sum of the two numbers. This perhaps helps us as we try to develop a higher level of skill in thinking of the ones, and then recording this 110 and finding the sum of the tens, six tens. This represents a still higher level of skill as we simply record the sum for the two numbers. We've already developed some techniques for assigning differences. Let's consider others. Our pair, 43, 26. Our starting set then, 43. And think now of separating this set into two sets, so that 26 is the number of one of those. We can start this set, our two tens. We see now that we need six ones. Again, it's necessary to think of this at one ten as ten ones. And our six ones, here, our remainder set. How can we name that number associated with that remainder set? 
we can say 43 minus 26, or the standard name, 17. Two names for the same number, 43 minus 26 is equal to 17. Now, how do we make use of symbols as we think of these records? We can start here by thinking it's the way we had, we had the objects. 40 plus 3, 20 plus 6. We can think then of subtracting the tens, the ones. The tens would be fine, but we see that we need to regroup. So we think of 43 not as 40 plus 3, but as 30 plus 13. Then we are able to think 3 tens minus 2 tens, 1 ten, and 13 minus 6, 7. The standard name, 17. Again, let us look at vertical forms which may be used as we think here. The first, <coughs> which closely parallels what we did with the objects. First, thinking of 20 from the 43, then using one of those tens, leaving it 10, to think now of 13 minus 6, or 17. Again, a higher level of learning as we might become more skillful in computing. We show our regrouping here so that we have three tens, 13 ones, and the difference of 43, 26, 17. Here, we simply record the difference without using any other records to help us in the thought processes. Thus far, we have developed some schemes for computing sums and differences, where pairs of numbers have been greater than 10, but less than 100. We can use these techniques to extend to other pairs, one of whose members, at least one of whose members, is greater than 100. We make use of old skills to develop new ones. But now let's think about the assignment of products. How do we compute products? Consider the pair 12, 23. We can associate that with an array, 12 rows, 23 members in each row. We could express this sum, a product, as 12 times 23. How do we identify the standard name? We could count. We could add 23 plus 23 plus 23 to find the sum of 12 23s. Yet, let's explore another possibility. 12, we could think of this as 10 plus 2. And we separate this array into two arrays. But we can also think of 23 as 20 plus 3. And we separate that again so that we show now not one array, but four. What products can we associate with each of these? With this, we associate 10 times 20. With this, 10 times 3. With this, we have 2 times 3. And with this, we have 2 times 10. Now, if we would find the sum of these four products, we would see that the standard name for the product, 276. But let's see how we could think using symbols to express this product. Our 23, uh, 12 times 23, we could write 12 times 23 and think of this as 10 plus 2 
times 23. Now using the uh, commutative and distributive properties, we can think it get right again here that this is 10 times 23 plus 2 times 23. Now, thinking of another way of expressing 23, we write 10 times 20 plus 3 plus 2 times 20 plus 3. Using the distributive property, we can write 10 times 20 plus 10 times 3 plus 2 times 20 plus 2 times 3. We recognize the four products associated with the array that we just looked at. We can express this then of the in standard, uh, using the products of standard names, 200 plus 30 plus 40 plus 6, or their sum 276. Again, we can make use of the vertical form as we look at some of the records that we might have. This, as did the others, rec uh, represent records that a child might develop going from simpler levels to higher levels or levels that several children might use all at the same time. Let's look at the first one. We see here the thought process of 10 23s plus 2 23s. The sum, 230 plus 46. The product, 276. This record closely represents the array, 230, 46, the product 276. Or we could make this more compact as we thought of 10 23s, 2 23s, the product 276. It makes little difference where we think of the 10s first and then the 1s. We see here, however, the 2 23s and then the 10 23s. There would be a difference perhaps if we would decide to drop this zero and think of 23 tens expressed without it. And of course, finally, just recording the product as we think six ones and then four tens, three tens, seven tens, and two ones. Through the years, I suppose computing quotients has seemed much, uh, much more difficult than computing addition, subtraction, and multiplication assignments. Let's consider ways of computing quotients. We think of the pair 41, 12. Our starting set, 41. Let's use, I think of the 12 as 12 members in each equivalent set. We separate this, 110 again, as we see one set of 12 removed from the set, a second set of 12, a third set of 12, and a fourth set with only five members. Clearly, there's not a quotient for the pair 4112. However, we can express the relation that we found here by writing this sentence, that 41 is equal to 3 times 12 plus 5. The action associated with division is very similar to that associated with subtraction. This gives some suggestions to us as we try to seek a method for finding quotients or attempting to find quotients using symbols. We saw that we couldn't find one for the pair 4112. What would a record look like if we attempted that? We consider here the pair 4112. This may well represent our removing one 
equivalent set of 12, a second set, and so on till we see the three sets of 12 with five left over. Of course, we could think of this in thinking first of two groups of 12, 24, and finally of three as we became more skillful. But let's consider techniques of computing qu uh, quotients for other pairs of numbers. This time we select 184 and 4. This first record may well be associated with a set of objects, as you may want to think of 184 objects. And we separate these into sets of four, four members in each set. Think of 10 such, such sets and which we could then subtract 40 to see that we still had 144 left. Think of subtracting another 10 set. 40 more uh, would be taken. And so on down till finally we had only 24. We can think then using one of our basic facts that 6 times 4, 24. We see that there would be 46 sets, 4 members in each one of them. We can shorten our work as we begin to make better judgments as to the greatest number of fours in 184. Thinking of 4 times 30, 120. 4 times 40, 160. 4 times 50, 200. We select 40. Subtract 160. Find still 24 remain. Six sets of four, 46. We can become even more skillful as we are getting multiples of four, of, uh, tens, ones, by just recording the four to let it represent four tens. Our record appears the same. And we come back to record the six ones. One difficulty here is we may forget, does this represent four tens, four hundreds, four ones, or what? by recording it above the eight in the tens place. Help us to uh, keep this in mind as we see four tens, six ones. Our record becomes a little shorter as we think of 160 expressed as 16 tens in this way. And still shorter as we think here of just recording the quotient. What can we say about 184 and 4? 184 is equal to 46 times 4 plus 0. Or we recognize there is a quotient for these two numbers as we write 184 divided by 4 is equal to 46. In the classroom, we must assume responsibility for helping each child develop skill in computing sums, differences, products, and quotients according to his level of ability. We can expect that all children will not develop the same level of skill. Also, children will discover that by understanding addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division assignments, properties of addition, multiplication, and numeration. They can limit the learning of sums, differences, products, and quotients to the basic facts. Foundations of Mathematics for Elementary Teachers has been presented by State College of Iowa under a grant from the National Science Foundation and prepared by E. Glenadine Gibb and Augusta Schurer, assisted by E. W. Hamilton and Diane Baum. The program was produced and directed by Robert Gabler and recorded at KDPS in Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs>